and how it uh, helps in sustainable growth or growth through sustainability. Uh, we have a simple example here. There are 1,000 power drills being sold from China to the European Union. And in the first scenario, the status quo scenario, we can see that the chart here goes from the profit margin to the material cost, to the labor cost, and other associated costs like distribution. And the revenue from that, let's just say it's $70,000. The revenue from that uh, is quite constant. What actually will happen without a circular economy, but a, a fixed linear um, supply chain, is that the material cost will go up. And with material cost going up, that's going to inflate other things in the economy and labor cost will go up, other costs will go up. So that profit margin in the status quo is obviously going to decrease. Now enter the circular economy where we are recycling, refurbishing, reusing and redistributing and we can see the equation starting to change a little bit. In the first example uh, we take we sell actually 800 power drills, uh, giving us uh, income, and 200 are refurbished and sold at an 80% of the original price. So here's a company that puts an incentive for the customers buying from them to actually uh, return or buy back the equipment at a small loss. 10% loss. This means that the profit margin slightly increases and the material cost is slightly less. And also the labor cost then is less. Uh, the, thir the third scenario is the recycling scenario where we are actually uh, both selling new and refurbished drills. Uh, but in this scenario there are also customers that are returning our products at the end of life, end of life of the product. So we have a new model out. We actually ask the people that bought the, bought the product from us to return it for a 5% refund of the original price. What happens next is that we as a manufacturing company, we take that part or that product, break it apart, find the long lasting components in that and put them back into new products or sell them through uh, uh, another channel. The last one, and you're seeing that the profit margin is always going up and the material cost is going down. So in the last scenario, which is pretty much uh, similar to the recycling scenario where we're reusing parts of the product, uh, we assume that the refurbished product that comes out of the recycling is sold to a completely new market. Might even be a new product that we use the same parts in. Like Renault, for example, the car maker. They uh, take a lot of uh, gearboxes back at the end of life or that have been returned because they were flawed. And they use parts from the gearbox in other products and that makes them about $300 million yearly that before made them nothing. My point is here, actually, with the cloud computing example and the linear supply chain example, is that any growth today is going to be limited by the supply chain. The supply chain is specifically the materials, the materials being uh, iron or, or coal or electricity, whatever it's based on, it cannot grow without sustainability. Simply because they're not infinite resources. So taking on the sustainability, uh, ta uh, tackling sustainability is a strategy for long-term growth. And these brands already know this. These brands have uh, 
gathered together and formed an organization called Sustainable Brands. And all of them are doing something in their business that is either using this concept of the circular economy or starting to take out parts of the supply chain that are not sustainable. Good example is IKEA. IKEA is heading towards complete energy independence for all of their stores and manufacturing facilities. So they're putting money now into solar plants for all of their facilities. So in the next five to 10 years, they will be energy independent. And therefore, don't have the same risk as you have on a coal-based, for example, energy grid. There are multiple examples of this, and I, I uh, suggest uh, you take a look at this. If you are at a company that you can influence the, the life cycle of products or, or simply the, the business model. So what can we do in the cloud computing aspect? We have this hyper growth challenge. We don't have a solution that will change this. We are already at exponential growth and we've seen exponential growth before and it doesn't stop. That's what we set out to do in my company. Uh, the solution to this, and the really the only solution to the exponential growth here, is to use renewable energy. And we can source renewable energy all around the world. Iceland is particularly well suited for this because we're the only country in the world with a 100% renewable energy grid. But we've also found other places. And Green Cloud is, for example, now opening in Seattle, which has a about a 98% renewable energy grid. Uh, governments are asking us if we can come to their country, like Canada, it's 96% renewable energy. Tasmania has about 87% renewable energy. Brazil has over 80% renewable energy. The potential here is huge, and it solves a real problem. We can stop the IT industry from being the worst industry for climate change. We've already surpassed the aviation industry and the car industry. What we do as well is that we show people how they're doing. Like you can't really say that you're saving the world without showing people the metrics. So that's what we do. When you actually use our systems, we monitor your energy use and we show you, compared to where you are in the world, how much energy you're using and how much CO2 you've saved. So just to recap, sustainable cloud computing, in our view, is the missing link in the supply chain. And that's where we fit in where there was no participation in the circular economy. And the good news is that sustainability can actually cost less. It may surprise you that hydroelectric power in the US sometimes costs less than coal. It's obvious to us in Iceland that have used hydroelectric and geothermal for a long time, and the cost here is about one third of what you have in Europe in any other energy source. But the reality is sustainability can cost less now, and it's obvious that it will cost less in the future. The best part is, and you can Google it, you can learn from the sustainability brands, sustainable um, focused brands, is that actually focusing on the sustainability not only brings efficiency, but efficiency of course lowers costs, and with a circular economy thought, it creates new business growth. And that's why uh, we see green as a new green and sustainability as a growth strategy. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Everything perfectly clear, I'm good. 
All right. All right. Thank you.